Now, we heard it over and over during the recent federal election. Canadians are polarized when it comes to climate change and energy issues, whether it be the voters heading to the ballot box or the party leaders duking it out on a debate stage. But early findings from a new survey suggest polarization may be more fiction than fact. Monica Gattinger is the chair of Positive Energy at the University of Ottawa. That's a research program exploring how to strengthen public confidence in energy decision making and she joins me in the studio now. Hello. Hello. How come you wanted to measure the um, extent of polarization when it came to uh, climate change and energy issues? Well, one of the things that we do at Positive Energy is try to get behind the headlines. And so we hear so much about polarized views on energy and climate change. And we wanted to get behind that and look at how polarized are Canadians really on these issues. When you say polarized, I think we know what you mean. But how did you define polarization for this? I think that's really important. So you can think about polarization in two ways. One of way, one of which is polarized views over time. So people are growing more and more different in their views and their, their views hardening and clustering at the ends of a spectrum. So if you ask people, do they agree or disagree with a statement, it's not just that they agree or disagree, but that they do so strongly, right? So it's that clustering, concentrated opinions at the either end of a spectrum. So we can look at that over time, but we can also look at it at a, in a snapshot in time. So this is a first survey. This gives us a snapshot in time to see how polarized our views. And then with future surveys, we'll be able to see, are they actually getting more or less polarized over time? What do you think, before you went into um, this research, what do you think that the perception was amongst um, polarization when it came to climate and energy issues? Well, I think, you know, we hear so much about polarization now, not just in energy and climate, but overall, right? So whether it's here in Canada or internationally in other countries. And I think, you know, one of our concerns was, it's like, you know, if you're holding a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And so we were a bit concerned to what extent Are we really polarized or are people seeing polarization in places maybe where it doesn't actually exist? And what did you find? Well, we it was fascinating to see uh, the results. So we made the distinction in our work between polarized opinions, which is the clustering at either ends of a spectrum. So people don't just agree or disagree. They do so strongly and fragmented opinion where, yes, there are differences of opinion, but it's people that aren't quite so hardened in their views. So there there might be a little bit more room for them to change their minds on issues. And so what we found is that, you know, asking them a whole host of questions. Where we see the strongest polarization is when it comes to partisan affiliation, Hmm. right? So a lot of polarized views along partisan lines, but where we would maybe have expected some polarization around sort of regional attitudes or uh, or regional uh, differences in the country or on age, there we didn't actually see as much polarized views as we would have thought that we might have seen. There we saw more in the way of fragmented opinions. So for instance, on the carbon tax, what did you find on that? Yeah, so we asked Canadians um, whether, you know, how strongly they supported the idea that Canada should have a carbon tax that applies equally across the country. And, you know, overall there we saw fragmented opinion. So people aren't in agreement necessarily on this issue. There's net support for a carbon tax across the country, but a lot of dispersion of opinions across all the way from strongly disagree to strongly uh, agree. Um, Very much polarized along partisan lines, but less polarization than we would have expected along regional lines and along age lines. So that for us is actually relatively hopeful because it means maybe there's more room for agreement and common ground on these issues than we commonly believe. And why do you think that is? I mean, what, what's behind those results? What are the questions you have? Well, we've got lots of questions and many additional uh, analyses to undertake. So that's part of what the next stage in this analysis is about, is trying to get behind that. Is it differences in values? Is it differences and ideological orientations. At this point, really, this snapshot, this first snapshot, enables us to distinguish to distinguish between what are polarized opinions and what are merely fragmented opinions, and where are we actually seeing some agreement? And then getting behind that to see, okay, well, what's driving that? That's the next phase. So when you hear somebody like Jason Kenney say, Albertans don't want the carbon tax, or somebody like Francois Legault say, um, Quebecers don't want to build pipelines, How should we be hearing that? Well, I would say that the data don't bear that out. You know, if you look at the regional level, because we did break this out across the country, whether it's, you know, Quebec or the prairies, Atlantic Canada, Ontario, British Columbia, um, the data don't necessarily bear that out. Um, And I think that for us is a concern, particularly in a minority parliament situation at the federal level, where we're likely to see a lot more in the way of partisan views coming forward. So, yes, those, those views are 
are, are polarized along partisan lines, but are they necessarily as polarized along regional lines uh, or along other uh, demographic variables? And there, I think we have to look a little bit more closely. That's really interesting. And you've given me some ammo as a journalist as well. So thank you for that. And research to be continued. This is just the beginning. So we'll check in with you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's Monica Gattinger. She is the chair of Positive Energy at the University of Ottawa. And she is also the director of the university's Institute for Science and Society and Policy.